So do you have a junctional tourniquet there with you that you can hold up for us? I do, I do. So the device sort of has this cummerbund shape. The belt is quite long. And then this is the ladder strap that I was speaking of. And so when it's strapped around somebody, when it's strapped around you, I'm just gonna put it on real quick so you can see how this works, but red to red. So the red just sort of lines up knowing that you've engaged the ratcheting buckle. Then you take all the slack out of the device and you use the ratcheting buckle to complete the tightening. And then it's just a blood pressure cuff, five ounce bulb. And this is the gauge and it has a green marker and a red marker. So again, we just tell the guys to go to green. And don't worry, I put this thing on thousands of times. And in fact, I, I, I like demonstrating it because one of the questions always is, well, does it impede the diaphragm from moving? Can you still ventilate a patient once you have it on? And I can still talk in full sentences with it fully applied. Alrighty, legs start going just a little numb. And I see green. So there we're at. So 250 millimeters of mercury pressure. It's applied. It doesn't come off the body very much because it's pressing into the body to stop all the blood flow at the aorta. And since you have it there, can you just show us the position that it would be put in for the axilla and the femoral artery? Yeah, sure will. So you don't have to inflate it there, but just so right, 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 get right. an idea. We, we were talking about it and how it compresses the subclavian artery, just a little yeah. bit of a sense of where it would go. So the um, target for the abdomen is the umbilicus. The target for the groin is uh, just right over the affected groin, one side or the other. In fact, if you have bilateral junctional, we just put it at the abdomen. And then for the axilla, it's placed high up in that axilla, and then the strap actually goes over the opposite shoulder. So the humerus actually splints the chest so that you can still ventilate on this side of the chest. The side that's affected where you're pumping up that bladder, you just won't have much compliance in the torso. It's just a lot of pressure against the ribcage at that point.